Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Genman African Safari Safari Planning Session, Episode 6. It has been a while, and we're very excited to be here today. Welcome, Gar. <laughs> Thanks, Kim, and uh, hi to everyone out there. <laughs> so today, we're going to be talking about Zimbabwe, and of course, I'm very excited about this. I think I say this every live. I tell people every live that I'm from Zimbabwe, because I'm very proud. I'm wearing my Zimbabwe earrings. <laughs> um, we have launched some very new exciting itineraries in Zim and they explore the different landscapes of Zimbabwe and one of these landscapes this time around happens to be Lake Kariba which is very exciting as houseboats are an incredibly beautiful and unique way to travel which Garth has recently experienced. Garth went to Zim in December and had a bit of a houseboat experience. So maybe, Garth, you want to say a little bit of uh, something about that? Yeah, um, yeah so late last year, um, Kim, um, I headed up to um, Zimbabwe with Dave Rogers, who's a photojournalist, and he was doing an article on the Getaway magazine, which is a local magazine here in South Africa. I'm, based, I'm down here in Cape Town, by the way, everyone. And uh, we went on an exploratory trip around Zimbabwe just to see how things were going after a year of, of longest shutdown you know to see you know what opportunities are there were there was in the industry um we flew into Bulawayo with fast jet from johannesburg and uh it was very easy comfortable cleared through the airport very easy and then we 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 did quite a grand tour of of zimbabwe well, we don't have to get into too many details on it um, no, so, so we were very <laughs> in the office while you were grand touring around zimbabwe sending us pictures <laughs> yes, it was it was nice to 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 head out on uh, on exploratory part of your job last last year, and certainly yeah. those two weeks was by far the highlight of of, of my year. Yeah. Um, and then from that, we've come out with a lot of new itineraries, and the one being um, the Wild Wonders that we're going to uh, talk about today, um, which is in the Vic Falls, Wangi, uh, Binga, Kariba um, area. Uh, right. <laughs> now we're getting away, away with ourselves because we're both so excited about this new itinerary. Um, I would like to welcome everyone from wherever you are watching today. Please, can you leave um, a hello in the comments? Tell us where you're from. Please remember to like our page, follow our page, share our stories just to keep the travel dream alive. Um, there are also going to be some very exciting discount codes that are going to be popped up during the talk. If you remember these, pop them in an email, send them to us with your next inquiry, and you'll receive a discount on your next holiday with German African Safaris. So the tour today is called Wild Wonders, and it explores the wild wonder waterways of Zimbabwe, and we actually start the tour in Victoria Falls. So I am going to bring in a slideshow. Well, the, the background fairy is going to bring in the slideshow. Garth, can you see it? Yes, yeah, it's coming through now. And I think okay. on the Vic Falls side, Kim, I'm going to let you talk to it, seeing that uh, is your home, was your home, you know? Yes, please do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so this itinerary is called Zimbabwe's Wild Wonders, and it is truly wild, and it is truly wonderful. So we start in Victoria Falls, um, then we move on to Wangi, and we move on to Binga. Now, before we even get into the itinerary, the way that we get into Victoria Falls, and it's very exciting that this is now a reality again, we are flying with fast jet airlines. I would like to ask Chris to bring in Julian Edmonds from FastJet to join us on the show. Hi, Julian. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Kim. How are How you? Are you? Are you yeah, good? All good, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all well. Yeah. You're joining us from Malta, which I've just learned. I am joining you from Malta, but my heart is very much still in Zimbabwe. So Julian was actually just telling us that he comes to Africa once a year? No, usually once a month. I'm once usually a month. In Africa. Once and a month. I haven't, I haven't actually been in Africa now since February two, 2020 because of, sure. uh, because of this COVID-19. Yeah. So if, if I'm missing Zimbabwe, 
you must be very much missing Zimbabwe from all the way over there, being able to come back here once a month. That's very lucky. Yeah, very, very, very much so. Um, and, you know, but um, it's amazing what technology can do, as here we are, the three of us, in all in different locations, all being able to chat. And um, we've been able to keep going, working from home, which has been fantastic. But, yeah, looking forward to trying to get back at some stage this year. So Julian is wearing a headset which looks very similar to, to a pilot um, and having been a pilot in his time and having been in the tourism industry since 1989, which shows how we all get completely hooked on tourism and once you're in, you're in with the love and passion of travel. Um, Julian, we've asked you to join us today. Tell us a little bit about FastJet because it is now our connection from South Africa to Zimbabwe which we are all dying to get back to. And if you can just speak into the access, the COVID protocols, how easy it is, you know, the question on everyone's lips is, is it is it stress-free and is it easy? And and are we able to get there? Uh, well, I mean, we, we try at FastJet to make travel as stress-free as possible. But I mean, obviously, we all know that um, people react differently to, to travel. At the moment, there are quite a lot of extra things, that extra hoops one has to jump through. Um, so FastJet is a, is a Zimbabwean airline. Uh, we fly um, between uh, Harare, Johannesburg, Bulawayo, Johannesburg, uh, Harare and uh, Vic Falls, Bulawayo and Harare. And recently, we have relaunched the direct services between Johannesburg and Victoria Falls. Which is very um, is very exciting indeed. Yeah. The, the, the flights are doing nicely. Uh, we're seeing we're seeing some nice nice support on that. And so, if you have flown with us, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we look forward to welcoming you back on board. Um, we, as I say, we try and make life as easy as possible. Uh, but unfortunately, we are also bound by regulation. Uh, our our responsibility is to try and keep our staff um, and our passengers as safe as possible. And that doesn't mean just an aviation safety, but also means their health. So um, it is a requirement that everybody entering Zimbabwe has to have a, a PCR, a negative PCR test. It has to be done within uh, 48 hours of departure. Um, and on the way back into South Africa, they need another test, which it has a slightly longer validity. So it's actually valid for 72 hours. Um, so, but, and, and, you know, Garth and Garth's team and your team, uh, are very good at arranging the necessary testing in Zimbabwe and can advise people on where to get tested in South Africa. Uh, but unfortunately it's not a negotiable, uh, point. It can't be, oh, well, can I get tested when I arrive? No, no. Uh, you have to have, you have to have those tests beforehand. Julian, I, I think on so, sorry, Kim, but Julian in South Africa now our testing is pretty good, and there's even uh, fast testing centers where you can get results in 15 minutes, and that's the same thing in Vic Falls. But one thing I really want to tell everyone about is the fact that I think Vic, well, Vic Falls is showing off about the fact that they're the first city town uh, in the world that's totally vaccinated. So yep. that's just fantastic. It's it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the Zimbabwean approach has been fantastic, and they've recognised that tourism is a very key uh, element to the economy. And uh, Victoria Falls is the capital of tourism within Zimbabwe, uh, and therefore it is important that our visitors feel as safe as possible. So they need to feel totally safe on the protocols, but they also need to feel safe from the people that are looking after them too. So uh, yeah, it's very encouraging, um, and long may it continue. I think, you know, you were saying, unfortunately, you have these regulations and things and sure, it's it's not great. However, if and when we want to travel now, I think to be responsible and acceptable for yourself and others on a trip to a country you're going to, you know, these tests are just something you have to do for the moment and just be grateful that you can actually yeah. get there. So, yeah. so and, and the other the other thing is, I mean, we're, we're, we're all, because we're all socially distanced, me by several thousand miles, uh, but we we're all able to be having this conversation without masks on. Uh, but you yeah. will have to wear a mask on board our aircraft at all times, yeah. uh, unless unless you're uh, you know having a, a drink or, or a snack. Um, but um, you know, other than that, masks are worn at all times. 
And then, and then the other side, you get to this incredible destination and you step out the plane and you get to your accommodation and you take your mask off and you go visit the Victoria Falls. <laughs> well, you do indeed. And, and the, the, the good thing to point out with us is that our planes are a little bit smaller than uh, a lot of other people. So we only have 50 seats. And um, the, the good thing with that is that it means you get through the airport fast. So you land in Victoria Falls and you're going out to enjoy the falls as quickly as possible. You're not yeah. standing in airport queues. Mm. And the falls is a destination as well as, as many places in Africa. There's a lot of space and your the lodge that you stay in or the hotel that you stay in um, has got the space that you don't feel like you're on top of each other, which obviously we all want to yeah. avoid at the moment. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which is and great. also, uh, I was actually chatting to a first timers to go to Zimbabwe, and I I, re I realized when I was talking to them the other day that they thought that the airstrip was like a gravel strip up at Big Falls, and I said no, actually, it's a brand new airport and a brand new massive airport terminal, which mm. they couldn't believe. So I said, yeah. look, let's look it up, and you can see it. So that's that's also phenomenal. We do yeah. actually go for sundowners on the old gravel airstrip, which is quite fun. But you definitely can't land a plane there. <laughs> no longer. No, I think there's. I think there's a couple of houses on it now too. <laughs> yeah, so that would yeah. be true. <laughs> yeah. Where it used to be elephants, now it's houses. There's a lot of development in the falls, which is also amazing. Yeah. Um, so, Julian, is there anything else you would like to tell us about fast jet or? There is actually one thing that I, I did want to ask you, um, and I sent you an email about three words that you would describe oh, Zimbabwe yes. with, which God's, I love. God's own country. God's Zimbabwe own. is God's own country. I just, so it's so true. When I got that email, I just sat here for a little bit and went, yes, Julian. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm I've, been, gonna... I've been to I've been to a lot of places in the world. I've lived in a lot of places in the world, and I've seen some amazing things. Um, but Zimbabwe is God's own country. I'm actually not going to say any more about it because it's just really self-explanatory. It's so beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to let you leave us there with it's those. It's a pleasure. Things. Thank you so much, Julian. And before before Thanks you so go, much. I want to say thank you as well because we are actually announcing a competition at the end of this live and Julian and FastJet have donated some flights, which we will expand on the details later. But I want to say thank you for those flights from FastJet. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure and we look to look forward to welcoming the winners on board. Thanks, Julian. Thanks very Thanks, much. Thanks, Julian. Bye -bye. Well, Bye -bye. See you in Africa soon. Indeed. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to bring back my slideshow. Can you see it, Garth? It's coming online, yeah. Okay. So these are the, the cool little fast jet planes. They are a little bit smaller, which is nice, so you're not in with a whole lot of people. And this is their logo, which you'll start to notice, and, and very proud, proudly Zimbabwean. So fast jet brings you into Victoria Falls, where you will first be staying at a lodge called Bayeti. Bayeti is a little lodge in the residential area of Victoria Falls. It's kind of in the heart of the residential area, which is very small. Big Falls is about the size of a village. And it is a beautiful little oasis, home away from home kind of lodge. Uh, there are about 30 rooms. They all, they're designed with, with local design, local tiles, very funky, very open, um, home cooked meals. It's, it's really a wonderful spot. Um, and of course, it's only a few kilometers from the Victoria Falls. So this is our first water wonder that you will encounter on our Wild Wonders activity, uh, sorry, itinerary, an activity on our itinerary. Um, and Victoria Falls is steeped in history. So you can either get a guided tour around the falls or you can go on your own at your own pace and read the placards around and, and gather the information but of course, there's the history of David Livingston, the bridge with Cecil John Rhodes. One of the first hotels was built in 1905. So it's culturally and historically interesting as well as a wildlife wonder. And of course, just an amazing, soul-moving, life-changing uh, thing to see. The energy of the falls is just incredible. 
You can also do your adrenaline activities in Victoria Falls, which there are many, one being the helicopter flip over Vic Falls. It's a wonderful way to see the falls from above as well as walking along it. And if you're brave enough, you can raft beneath it as well. And then jump off the bridge and, and watch it bounce behind you. So there's a lot of activities and you can either be cultural, historical, adrenaline driven. Victoria Falls is a really, really awesome spot, a very special spot to go visit, um, as well as being on the Zambezi River. And then on top of it, what um, what amazes me is, I will get to Angie now, but what amazes me about Vic Falls is that you can have elephants walking down the main road, that you basically, uh, it, in the national park where you've got game coming around as well. I think it's so unique um, it's as, a, as a village in the world, you know? Yeah, it's very unique. I remember driving to, to the office in the morning or the coffee shop or, you know, and you're stopping in the road to let past a family of warthog or, you know, a troop of baboons or when the dry season comes because the falls is on the edge of the national park, the animals land up coming in through the town being their natural animal corridors um, to look for water. So when you're driving home at night or... Uh, you don't have to worry about who you're going to bump into, but maybe what. <laughs> um, many a night I drove home being like, mm, are there elephants around the corner? Because I lived right on the edge of town. And often you'd bump into some elies or a herd of kudu or a hippo, just, you know, waddling down the road. And you learn the respect of being there with these animals. And it is, it's truly amazing. Um, and it's very different living in Cape Town now and, and um, not having... It's very different traffic jams where I live now. <laughs> yeah, <I'll laughs> so now, since we're talking about elephant, maybe you can speak into elephant's eye. Sure. So, so Kim, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm down in Cape Town. So normally, uh, I mean, I'm up in, in Zimbabwe every month, second month in normal time. Last year, the last time, well, the last time I was up there was November, December last year. and haven't been up uh, this year yet. Um, and I'd always take a family holiday and we'd always go to Wangi and Vic Falls, fly into Vic Falls, whether it was via Johannesburg or direct flights as well from Cape Town. Um, and we would do uh, Victoria Falls, do some of the activities, then we'll go down to Wangi and spend a good chunk of time there with you know, the game drives and that. And then we'd always head down to the river. It was always a fantastic way to end off your, your trip up in, in Zim. And we'll be speaking to um, Byron just now um, on the Sovereign Houseboat down in Benga. But anyway, it's at Elephant's Eye, um, we're in the Sukumi uh, Forest at Elephant's Eye, and we get the, what you call the presidential herd, which is a semi-habituated herd that comes through to the lodge every afternoon. It's quite strange. They seem to come around four o'clock in the afternoon, and they spend sometimes they come and just drink it at, at our pan and leave. Other times they stay and they've drunk the swimming pool dry before overnight, so we have to yeah. pull the pool up the next day, and they wander around between the between the chalet. We also so, had a so, yes, sorry. Can I just quickly, so the first time I went to Eri, I was sitting in the uh, around the campfire, and it must have been the presidential herd. They were just chatting, sitting around the campfire. I think we just done an art workshop. And the Ellie's were sort of there in the distance, and then they were not so in the distance, and then they were right at the swimming pool. And I remember sitting at the campfire, sort of looking at the elephant and being like, Is this fine? <laughs> <laughs> Should we move? And the, the guides were so good. They were very relaxed, you know, Dumi and the other guides were standing there, very much watching the Ellie behavior. And the Ellie's weren't bothered, they were just, you know, having a drink from the swimming pool. We were having a drink around the campfire. We're sharing sharing the, the vista, us and the elephant. And it was, yeah, jeepers, that is something I'll never forget. That was truly something very special. Yeah, it is. It's magical every time it happens. And at nighttime as well, so all of our chalets are, are elevated. They're two meters off the ground. And the alleys come in between. And, and you can see the, the image on the left where the bath is. There's a lot of trees in that. And they snap off the small... Um, twigs and stuff, but at night time it sounds like they're breaking a whole branch. You have this whole, you know, vibe yeah. going on at night time, which is quite amazing. Yes. It's amazing for me, I've experienced it many times, but for anyone from the city, it's just 
quite incredible. So Elephant's Eye is on a private concession bordering um, Wangi National Park. We've got our own uh, gate that goes straight into Wangi National Park. Of course, there's no fences. So the wildlife moves between our private concession and Wangi National Park. We're also lucky in that we're close to the Painted Dog Centre. So we, we go and see that's a rehabilitation centre for the painted dogs. We've also got uh, quite a lot of community-based um, activities, like going to visit a local school and a village and um, uh, for, for clients who want to do that as well. And then on the other side of our concession, we've got a, a sky bear called, uh, called the Eye, and clients who are up for it can go and spend the night up there under the stars. And on its own pad, wildlife comes throughout the night, and you hear all the sounds of Africa in the night. So it's, I, it's, I highly recommend that. Life I highly recommend it as well. Um, yeah. I think it can be quite an overwhelming thought, especially if you're in your chalet and you hear the crunching of the trees. If you're not in a chalet at all and hear the crunching of the trees, you just have to surrender to the sounds of the African night and know that you're safe. No, totally. And we, you, and we, you know, we, we, we have um, guides uh, in strategic places with radios. So any time during the night, you can radio through to your guide and they can come and help you if there's any issues, but but we haven't had any issues and it's really safe, otherwise we wouldn't do it. And then of course, we, we, we also do, on this itinerary, we also go into the, the, the park and we spend a full day in the National Park going around to some of the most popular um, pans and seeing the diversity of different wildlife that one can see. Of course, Wangi has a, uh, has you know lions and this good, uh, good wild dog as well. Um, and then of course, Wangi is renowned for its huge herds of, of elephants. At times, there can be up to 45,000 elephants in Wangi. Mm. They do traverse from there into Botswana as well because Wangi is based on the Botswana border. So there's a, it's nice that there's still that natural movement of yeah. wildlife yeah. in Botswana. There's animal corridors. Yeah. Is, there's a lion and some wild dog here. Is my screen up? Yes. Yeah, okay. As well. um, yes. I just wanted to say what's so lovely about LEI is and this is a lovely thing about hideaways is that each lodge kind of wears a different hat and the hat of elephant's eye i love the community and conservation based initiatives uh, that it offers because we were always based on impactful travel but especially moving through covid and and post covid just to uh, encourage and offer travel with intention you know, so coming to LEI, you can go to the Wild Dog uh, Sanctuary and either make donations or gain awareness or whatever it may be. You're, you're learning and seeing what is happening on the ground and meeting the local people as well. And in the community, uh, going to the school, going to the ladies who make beads, going to the woman who sew, there's like a whole entrepreneur, um, uh, little village uh, business world going on. Which, which is incredible and I think so important for people to experience of a place and, and not necessarily just the safari. So it, it really is a holistic type of safari experience, which is so nice. Yeah, totally. And, and then, and then and sorry, Kim, Karen. No, I was, just, I was just saying, and Lion and Wild Dog, which is pretty cool. <laughs> for sure, for sure, totally cool. And then Kim, just from our side on general safaris, one thing, I mean, with our, I mean, we've got like close to 30 years experience is really we've looked at itineraries and this one being one of them where we do short transfers from one point of interest to the next. So from Vic Falls to Elephant's Eye, it's only a, a two hour transfer. And then from, from uh, Elephant's Eye down to Binga, that's another two hours. So it's really short, interesting. You're going through the countryside, like, like down, down to Binga, you're going rolling, there's a lot of rolling hills and that beautiful roads. You, you take your time down there. There's little uh, local villages along the way as well. So that's what's phenomenal about uh, about this this specific itinerary is you're spending most of your time really experiencing the different areas and even the yeah. transfers yeah. between our, our experiences as well. Which is a great thing about Jenman. To have less time in, in the in the car on travel. Um, right, the next part of our uh, itinerary is very exciting and I think something that we've been dying to talk about for a while, uh, something that's also very nostalgic for Zimbabweans and it's wonderful that it's coming back as an option um, and it's wonderful that German and African safaris have, have noticed it as a very, I, I kind of think of it as sort of the romance of travel to be on a houseboat. So to 
to bring in Byron from Zambezi Cruise Safaris, he is going to um, explain the houseboat experience. I hope he's still there. He is in Zim, so electricity can be, yay! Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Byron. Byron, how's it? Are you well? We were a little bit worried that you weren't going to make it because uh, your Zessa seems a bit iffy over uh, there. You know, life in Zim, we always get through it all. Eh? We always do so well, make up. Says, says the man sitting with Kariba as a backdrop. You know, as you know, any Kariba trip's got to start with a gin and tonic, so don't mind me. I'm just going to open my gin and tonic here while uh, so, so, after <laughs> the any excuse to drink. Any excuse to drink. Uh, no, gin and tonic. You got to start a Kariba trip with gin and tonic, so we will start oh this. It's I so also want to. I want to translate for everyone because it was two Zimbos talking to each other, talking about Zessa. Zessa is electricity oh, yeah. power. <laughs> For everyone that didn't know. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, welcome, Byron. We're very excited to have you with us today. Thank you for having us. And you get to explain a very, very exciting part of the itinerary and I think a slightly unknown area of Zimbabwe, of which you have described with the three words untouched, mythical, and uncomparable. So please go ahead. I mean, it's, uh, you know, houseboating is a wonderful experience. And um, this cruise operates right on the southern side of, of, of Lake Creeb in, in a little town called, starts from a little town called Binga. It's about, gosh, 200 kilometers from, Elif from, from Wanky. And it's a very mythical, it's a tribal area. Most people uh, relate houseboating to the Kariba town, but we're on the other side of the lake. It's untouched. There is no developments. You will cruise for three, four hours. No cruise, no people. You just the people living off the lake. It's a wonderful experience. It's so different. It compensates mm -hmm. any safari, any safari you have. And it's truly Zimbabwean. As every Zimbabwean loves houseboating, and we've just taken it to another level, created it um, to a international standard. And we've and it's an experience that, as I said, it's it, it's it's uncomparable. There's only one Lake Kariba. It's it's a sea. It's 270 kilometers long. It's 40 kilometers wide. It's amazing. You know, it's an amazing experience, and I know Garth had a great time. We went out there just to we on a short time, but it's just uh, it's so it's so soothing for the soul just to be, you know, fresh air. And in these times, you know, even in the world, there's all crazy and everyone's locked up. And you know, we're lucky our chair in Zimbabwe and we've got space for people just to see and just, you know, basically. But it's a wonderful experience, and uh, it's it's a great addition to to any tour. Um, it, it it offers such a rounds off a it gives you a true zimbabwean experience it rounds off a safari gives your clients a bit of time to sit back and relax and it's a cruise product you do at least three four hours cruising every single day um you, there, there's activities involved from our tender boats this particular itinerary you'll cruise from Masumu four hours up to a, up to into the chete safari area to a little to, to a little bay, a little river called Sengwa River, where you'll explore it from the little tender boats down the river, crocodiles, hippos. There's, Can I jump there's... in here for, for a second? Yes. Carry on. So, so what I, I'm very excited about uh, in what you're saying is very much the exclusive side of the experience. Like you know who you're with, you're on this luxurious floating hotel on this very vast almost ocean-like lake. It's so big. Um, and I think it's just wonderful to be able to have that much space to yourself, that much wild space to yourself. And once you jump on those little tender boats, um, you can really explore the, the um, I wanted to say coastline, the shoreline oh, of yeah. the river and the different little bays and things that it's Rick, remote it? and it's kind of yours. So this is very much your experience, which I, I, there's something very special about that, you know. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's it. it. It's untouched. It is literally untouched. Um, and, and it's an amazing, you know, the wildlife is, is, is there. There's no national park where we are cruising in this cruise, but the wildlife is there. Um, and it's um, it's it, it contrasts. It's it's a it's a safari. There's something special about game viewing from in the boat, looking at the animals. It's a total different perspective on it. Um, so and so it's, it's, 
it's 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 probably the hardest thing to do is sell a Kriba trip. You know, it sells itself. You know, it always undersells and over delivers, and 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 then that's that's the beauty of it. And it's um, it has a bit for everybody. It has a bit of um, it ha just has a bit of everything for everybody. You know, it is it sh you know, all cultures, everything. I Guys, think it's so, so, okay. so, sorry, sorry, <laughs> We all want to talk at the same time. We all sorry. want to talk. Just too excited. You know, it's a career, eh? <laughs> <laughs> No, I just wanted to say, you know what? What I find lovely about ending off a safari on a houseboat is going on safari because you, you're so excited and you want to take everything in. Is actually can be quite long days because you're out leaving at six in the morning. You're out into the park and and it, it can it can be hot. Um, but you, you're so excited, you want to take take it all in. But then going down to Lake Kariba, getting onto, I mean, the likes of Sovereign, which is a phenomenal boat with air-conditioned cabins, and and, it, and you, with the tender boats and the different activities you can do, you can go out on a tender boat before breakfast, for instance, do a little bit of fishing, wildlife viewing and that, and you come back for, for, for breakfast. But then if you want to chill for the rest of the day, you can. And you know, everyone can do their own thing. I mean, I even remember, Byron, one afternoon, I think it was on our trip, you guys were going out on a fishing trip again or, or, or Dave wanted to get some more photographs and that of, of the wildlife. And I just said, no, guys, I'm going to stay back here and read my book. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you're reading a book, but you're also just taking in everything from the from the houseboat. And so I, it's just a, phenom a phenomenal way of ending off a, a safari in Africa because you're nice and relaxed. And you're so yeah, right. Yeah. On, the boat, on the plane back home. Kim, your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually forgot what I wanted to say. No, um, you're surrounded by nature, which is incredible. I mean, everywhere you look, it's, it's, you, don't, you don't step away from it. You're, you're in it. And it's just, it's wild. And it's, I mean, a Kariba sunset, if people have ever seen a Kariba sunset, I, any other sunset in the whole world will be hard to, to compare once you've seen a Kariba sunset. Uh, that uh, is true. You, yeah. can't, you can't beat the with the with with the trees across the lake and you know over over the mountains and the rocks. No, it's it's unbelievable. And that is true. You know? And a GNT. And a GNT. Oh, I've only got my coffee here. No, no, no. G <laughs> GNT is perfect. Uh, <laughs> so um these boats, the the sovereign uh is quite a, you said you you've made it into international standards. So you are cruising Kariba in style. I don't know if you can maybe speak a little bit into... Yeah, I mean, there is a perception of, about houseboats. So we kind of refer them as cruise boats because they are they are luxury cruise liners. So all of our vessels are, are en suite. Um, so they all have their own private, uh, private uh, shower, like in a hotel room. It's a floating hotel. The traditional Zimbabwean, South African houseboats, self-catering, sharing... So we've taken that and made it a floating hotel. We have lots of public areas. Each boat has has a pool, has air condition, has fans that come in overnight because the Kariba is very hot. Uh, we have um, there's we 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 have crew from the local tribal lands. You'll hear about the mythical stories of Kariba and how mm -hmm. the impact of, of 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 the of the lake has had on the people. And you're right in the heart of of this in Binga with. And there's a story to it. So you'll you'll interact with our staff, you'll understand it. But the boat is very luxurious. As Gar said, you can we have several speed boats. You can go out and speedboat fishing, you can go uh, cruising on the tender boat, game viewing, you can just lie on the vessel by the pool. Lie on a very cool couch and read your book while sailing yes. along. I mean And and a lot of houseboat trip is it's not like a it's very it's very flexible. You know, I mean, even though the you'll be having this boat has ten cabins, you'll have to have up to twenty people there. You can more than you don't have to do everything like a group itinerary. If you want to go do this, you can carry on doing that, and yeah. it's very flexible. Well, a lot I mean, of it's, almost, it's almost like um, hiring out a self-catering, floating luxury vessel, and yeah. your time is your own, which is amazing. Yeah, um, and, and, yeah, and it's it's a wonderful experience, you know, and it's. And, and it changes every day, and that's the beauty of it, you know. The, I assume the, there's a chef on board, yes. Yes, yeah, so we we have all qualified chefs. They work out of a very small kitchen, but we we use a lot of local fish stuff, local stuff from the local areas. We try and support the local fishermen, and as much as we can, 
And yeah, we, we offer a high standard. You might not get all your fancy st salads and stuff. You're looking on a boat that has no electricity, but you have yeah. a, a high standard of, 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 of food and you never leave a Kariba trip with, with an empty stomach. And it's, yeah. it's a, it, it, it is an experience that compensates and finishes off any safari. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful addition to anyone's holiday, whether it's... Uh, yeah. And, and Byron... Uh, uh, also a unique thing, and especially for our, our Southern African viewers. So traditionally with houseboats, you would go to Kariba and you would need to hire the whole houseboat. Um, a lot of locals hire self-catering houseboats and, and whatnot. And, and then what you guys have done with the houseboats, you've taken it up another level, as you mentioned, with aircon. I mean, it's full service, you know, all, all your meals included and all of that. But another uh, a unique thing that we're doing um, together now with Sovereign is that people can actually book a cabin and don't have to book the whole houseboat because yeah. and that, that opens the market up just for, for couples who are coming, you know, or, or some friends who are coming. You don't have to book a whole houseboat, which obviously can be quite pricey, um, yeah. but you can, um, you can book a, a specific cabin, you know, a two night cruise or a three night cruise. So that, that's something unique. And it's so close to the access point with fast jet flying into, um, in, into Vic Falls, you know, it's, it's um, in and out of so Joburg. That's what I was going to say. Um, is that people think Kariba is so far away and it's, oh, you know, it's too far to get to. And now this itinerary has made it feel very accessible, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Garth, you actually answered Natalie's question, which was, is the boat, is the boat on exclusive basis or per cabin? So thank you for answering that. And then we've got a question from Ruth. Are there activities geared to children on the cruise? So, what is, what is the age um, minimum age for the for the cruise? I mean, in, in order, especially with a with, with a charter for private charter, there is no age limit. But in order to protect a guest experience, if on a shared charter, we try and say no children under seven years old, and all our boats are, are very are very safe and stuff like that. But it's more just protecting the experience of the other people because children running around on small boats. So private charters, there's no age limit, seven years to 12 years. Um, we, 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 we will take children up from seven years old. And they do have a – they will follow pretty much the same itinerary um, in terms of the I mean, fishing. there's a swimming pool and there's fishing. And yeah, because it's the, the house, yeah, you're there, early, Yeah, there, there's, can... there's, lot, there's lots to do. It's the real old keep entertained, board games, a bit of chess. There's no Wi-Fi. It's yeah. just letting go and just just relaxing, you know, sitting back and just, you know, cruising into the sunset, literally, you know, which, yeah. is, which is a wonderful thing. And um, yeah, and, and as I said with Garth, going back to the two thing, we got this tour. You, you know, there's not many tours you can do on, on a basis of two packs. You know, it's very accessible into Victoria Falls. You can book a tour. You get on to, you get into Wanky on the cruise. So that's where everything would be a group charter. So you know, a couple can easily join these tours and and the, and the itinerary. Can, can work in so many different ways for everybody. So it's, um, no, it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience and um, it'll be great. Yeah, and Byron, I, I, sorry, sorry, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, what a favorite for me is when you guys bring the houseboats right up onto a beach on an island and then you do a braai slash barbecue oh, yes. for everyone. And also you can stretch your legs and walk around the islands as well. You which is so, I mean, on, on this on this itinerary, we have a place called the Hondra Bay, which is like a it's like four or five kilometers of beach, white sandy beaches. I mean, you'd think you're you're at the ocean. So we moor the boat there on the second night, and we have a we have a we have a beach braai under the stars, and that's actually our cultural evening, where we oh. let our staff we our staff host the thing, talk to the talk to the clients about their experiences, the Tongan tribes, the different cultures of, of involved in the area. We also do. We have. We have all the trips are, are are guided. We have qualified guides that are net um, locals and Bobwin guides that that um, host the trips and they're knowledgeable. They they have they um, talk of, of um, stargazing on the beach. The following morning, from that, yeah. we do a, we do a two hour game nature walk to in, in the rivers and dig up croc nests and all just interesting stuff that you're not going to get on any other any other safari. So. It's um yeah it's well catered for in terms of of well rounded, and so, I think I think that kind of thing that you've just spoken about with the guides and the exploring and the crop nests and the stars and stuff, we're speaking about children just now. 
children are so curious and keen for that kind of thing. Um, so that would be amazing for the kids when you jump off on, onto the islands and to do the exploring and to sit under the stars and to be on the beach, you know, again, all to yourself, which I just think is, is a wonderful. Edu educating people about Zimbabwe is, is, yeah, is a big thing. That's great. Part of and Zimbabwean course. guides are amazing. Yeah, no, and and it's, and it's a and it is. It's just the interesting people. They're resilient, and it's been yeah. They're a part of it, and you know, you 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 you'll, you'll leave as a you'll, you'll leave as a friend from one of our Zambezi cruise safaris, which is which is great. Oh man, I, the last time I went on a houseboat was probably when I was a teenager, and this it's something that sits with you forever. It settles, Kariba settles in you. Like it's it's a it's just a very beautiful spiritual you can, you can never come here too many times it's just the same you know that you can't you just keep on going i mean i work for this company and i any any chance i get i'll get on a houseboat with my family and it's never i never get bored of it so which is a wonderful thing you know and that, and that's about it yeah. and the beauty of our cruises is there is only one lake kariba you can't you can't ever you can't ever recreate that and mm -hmm. um yeah, the terrain and everything. It's a, there's not, it's yeah, a, there's not really a similar, you can't be like, oh, there's an alternative. To it until a lot of it is that it sells itself. You get out here and you realize what, what you can do and everything. So one last question um, before we say thank you and, and move on to the end of our chat, Byron, is again from Natalie. On the shared charter, are there any specific sale dates? How does that work? So in basically, we're going to be looking at running this. We're going to have weekly departures on this on this boat. So you'll, you, we're trying to, it'll be a weekly departure running on a two-night and three-night itinerary. So there will be specific sale dates. There will be more dates during the safari season. There will be a, a lot more. There will be dates throughout the year. It's another beautiful thing about Lake Kariba is you can operate all year round. There's not really a rainy season. So there will be specific sale dates. And as soon as, and those dates will be available as soon as travel resumes we will have those dates out and there'll be regular dates lots of lots of lots of cabins available for people to people to join that's awesome and remember really good accessibility guys it's it's so much easier to get there now so kariba is definitely and should be on your bucket list it's amazing thank you and connecting it with wanky is wonderful and easy it's yeah. a beautiful and then you get nice both you, you get your classic game safari and then you get your 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 yeah. cruising safari yeah, um byron you have been wonderful. Thank you so much for Very explaining much. that to us. I think we a lot of yes. people are going to go away dreaming of Kariba. And Byron, you're about to, to head off on a speedboat to yeah. catch up with a houseboat, aren't you? I'm, about to, I'm going on a houseboat trip, eh? You know, just so. Uh, uh, it, it's Half a bit life. tough one, you know. So, okay. so cheers. Thanks very you much. Well. <laughs> Thanks so much, eh? Thanks a lot, Byron. Keep well, mate. Bye. Bye. So, um, this Wild Wonders itinerary is about to be launched as a competition. And as you can see on my slideshow, these are our last competition winners so that you guys all know it is true. It does happen and it is life-changing and incredible. So our last Genman Safaris competition was for Botswana Sensations. And this very lucky couple, and I think they just got married, um, so treated this as their honeymoon, which is really cool. And they got to go to Menoakwena, Little Pan, Delta Camp, and Camp Kazuma in Botswana. And this was on their final two days, um, obviously cheersing champagne, first of all, to their honeymoon, and second of all, to the, to the wonderful competition. So, okay, I'm going to go they, out. And Kim, they yeah. also managed to get into, into Vic Falls as well before they, before they flew uh, out. Yes, they did, which is very exciting. And they were very excited about that. So they are very lucky. So just to give you a little taster of what our trips are like, and, and they are about to send us a review, which we will uh, publish over the next week or so, um, because this next this itinerary that we've been speaking of today is up for grabs for a lucky winner, and they're plus one. So we're going to launch the competition tomorrow, but you will get the exact itinerary that we've just spoken about. Of course, terms and conditions apply. You'll start in Big Falls flying in with FastJet. Thank you again, FastJet. It makes it very exciting that flights are included from Joburg, from South Africa only. Uh, however, international people can um, enter into the competition. 
and you'll be seeing a baieti in the beginning in Victoria Falls. You can go jump off the bridge or raft down the water, um, the wild waters, into Wangi National Park, maybe meet the elephant, uh, the presidential elephant herd at Elephant's Eye at the swimming pool, and then head on to Lake Kariba for a few days for this incredible houseboat safari that we've been speaking of. Um, if I could enter, I definitely would. So, yeah, please watch um, on our Facebook and our Instagram pages tomorrow. F follow the, um, the, what are they called? My mind's gone blank. The things that you have to follow to enter. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Follow the certain pages. There'll be a couple of pages that will, yeah. Yeah, that my, mind's, my mind's in Kariba. I'm sailing away. I'm in a Kariba sunset somewhere. <laughs> Um, so that's very, very exciting, and Jemin is very excited to be able to offer this to you guys in, in a way to explore and experience our beautiful Zimbabwe. Uh, Garth, is there anything else you would like to... No, say? I'm just a little bit annoyed with Byron because he's having a GNT and he's cruising on the lake as we speak, you know? I know, and it's I also, know very lucky. What's fantastic, I know we all we've all got... You know these these lives where we can connect around the world and feel like we we with each other is phenomenal. But of course, we need the real thing again, which is opening up again. There's, there's more flights going into into Zimbabwe all the time now, and uh, that vaccination at Elephant's Eye, all the staff are vaccinated now. They've actually got teams going around to the different uh, hotels and and lodges around Zimbabwe and vaccinating everyone. Plus, the, the in the cities, everyone's getting vaccinated. So they. They're yeah. doing a phenomenal yeah. job in, in Zimbabwe at the moment, which is great yeah. for so, our yeah. Well done, Zimbabwe. Um, well done, Jenman, for creating this itinerary to for people to go and explore God's own country. And I'm going to leave it there and say goodbye Bless and thank you to everybody who joined us today. And please remember to watch for the competition details. Thank you, Garth. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Kim. Thanks, everyone. Keep well, guys. Have a good rest of the week. Ciao.